uh, I often get asked by my ex-students or even students who are currently studying kinematics but uh, who happen to you know see some real life machines in uh, an industrial visit or something and uh, they are puzzled they are puzzled by what they see in real life machines and uh, what is shown in their textbooks or what we draw on the blackboard because the two things are very different the real life machines are nothing like the diagrams in your textbooks and uh, there is a huge gap there so we are trying to bridge that gap here uh, i'll try to show you how to figure out the schematic from a real life machine so here is uh, earth mover we are going to start with uh, we are going to have this slider which will really uncover the schematic uh, inside this earth mover so first thing we encounter is this bucket here so it is its shape is pretty complicated it has these teeth like things which really help you dig and all but kinematically speaking that means nothing so forget about shapes of things focus on connectivity so we will keep erasing this bucket till we come to this point this is a hinge and this is the first thing we encounter that is of any kinematic significance Okay, so we'll retain this hinge, but we'll forget about this bucket. All we need is the bucket is connected with one more hinge here. So let us keep that hinge or a pin joint over here. And these two pin joints are connected by a single line or a single link, which just happens to be of uh, the shape of a bucket. Kinematically speaking, you could as well show a line here. Next. We will reduce this link here okay, to its kinematic equivalence. So it is nothing but a straight line with two little circles which represent the pin joints. Well, next we have something interesting, this triangular looking machine part. Now remember, whenever you see a triangle with three pins at the vertices, then it is a structure. Whether the triangle is hollow or solid doesn't matter but it is a structure and a structure always moves as one entity so kinematically although we will be drawing three lines like this connected with three pins really speaking it forms a single link so i have shown this with this yellow outline so that is a single link such links are called as ternary links because they are connected to three other links by the way as we are moving towards right you will see this complicated link okay. it really has some crooked shape like this uh, that shape is not to uh, confuse someone or the competition who is trying to copy the machine maybe but it is because of the stresses that are uh, coming on that part so maybe bending movements or you know shear compression tension even torsion who knows so that is dictating the shape or cross section of this part but kinematically you will see we are just getting a single straight line and on that line we are having this pin joints one two three and one more four here okay we'll keep going and uh, this is where we first encounter our uh, sliding uh, joint or a prismatic uh, pair uh, this is a plunger going in a hydraulic cylinder we'll continue like this this is our second prismatic uh, pair and now we have come to our first pin which is fixed so this is where the mechanism is connected to the chassis we'll continue one more fixed pin and finally one more fixed pin here so the mechanism as such is just this much rest of uh, the earth mover is of no kinematic significance it costs a lot of course there is cabin and there is engine and there is everything but as far as kinematics goes it is of no consequence once you have uncovered the underlying mechanism then you can start focusing on it to study its motion so let's do that uh, so I'm just marking the boundary which is of interest to me like this then I'm going to mark this region so that I can see through it and then I'm going to cut this out so here is the underlying mechanism. We are also able to see uh, the rest of the machine uh, that surrounds it. 
and we'll start studying motion. For example, now we want to know what moves this bucket, what tilts it. So it is this plunger here, this particular hydraulic cylinder and what lowers it or say raises it, it is this hydraulic cylinder. So this way you can start focusing on the motion that is afforded with this mechanism.